Hey guys, it's uh, Buck up in North Queensland. Well, today's clips on the Dominator winch. Uh, a few of you have been asking me about it. I did the unboxing on the Dominator winch oh, a couple of months ago now, and also the Hercules recovery kit. And a lot of you have been asking about when am I going to do some winch clips and all that. So this one could go for a little while. Um, but first of all, I'm going to have a chat to you about the Dominator winch, which I got from the four wheel drive super center. Have a chat about some of the characteristics and uh, the, the, the data on the actual winch itself, this particular brand of winch. Um, I'll have a chat about how we went about installing it uh, with my old next door neighbour Troy, he's an old diesel mechanic. Um, he came over and uh, helped me get the Dominator into the ARB winch bar. And um, then we might go through and have a chat about some of the safety characteristics around winching guys going to go right into the safety side of things with winching. Now one thing I won't do, and this is under recommendation from my son Phil, who you know, I'm certainly far from being a professional at uh, any of this type of stuff. Uh, I've done a little bit of it, but I'm certainly uh, not competent in it. And I certainly don't think my knowledge is high enough to be putting out how to winch and, and the exact way to winch and do double line pulls and all that on YouTube. And my son, who was a recovery mechanic in the Army for five years, I'd class him as a, a professional in, in relation to recoveries, like a six-month course, and then five years after that actually doing the job and um, driving Mack trucks with cranes and 20-ton winches and doing four-way recoveries and dragging vehicles up hills and all that in the Army. So that was his actual trade, was recovery mechanic, and he's uh, very knowledgeable. And I picked his brain a little bit to do this clip but he, he recommended that I don't show you actually how to go about doing winch recoveries because you can leave yourself open, you know, you can be liable if something goes wrong, if someone out there might want to sue you, and I certainly don't that want that happening at this stage of my life. I, I do this to try and pass some info on guys, uh, and you, hopefully you'll get a lot of information out of this clip, but I certainly won't be showing you how to um, do a proper recovery. There's other guys out on the internet with a lot more experience than me, and uh, you can watch them. And I actually, there's one guy out there, and I'll put his link at the um, the end of the clip. His name's Ronnie Dale from Four Wheel Driving in Western Australia. Really good. I'll put his link at the end, guys, if you're keen on watching Ronnie do some winching. Um, one thing I am going to do also is you you will see me actually use the winch, and it's the way I the way I do it. But you won't see me explaining exactly how to do a winch recovery okay but um, now as you know winches are mechanical and like anything mechanical they need to be used guys just having them sit still and not being used is the worst thing you can do for any sort of machinery tractors diesel engines your, your cars winches anything with a motor you've got to keep it running and the last thing you want is when you actually need to use your winch is um, you know, you go to use it, and you're in a you're in a bit of strife, and the damn thing doesn't work. So what I like to do is every month, since I've had this winch, it's only been a few months now. I like to get it out. I like to hook it up, and just make sure it's still working the way it should. And you'll see me do that. And uh, as I said, I'll also go through a lot of safety precautions with you. Also, so the first thing I want to talk about is the actual Dominator winch itself, guys. Um, I got it from the four-wheel drive super center, which you've probably seen me mention in a lot of my other clips There's a lot of winches out there a lot of good winches um, I went with this one mainly because of the price guys. It's a um, You see them use it on four-wheel drive action Graham and Sean and that they really put it through its paces and For a cheap winch. I think it's a, a very good buy um, 12,000 pounds or 5,440 odd kilogram winch, so 12,000 pound winch. Most of your winches that you see people running on a four wheel drive will be either 12,000 pound or 9,500 pound, maybe 10 or 11. Um, so this is a 12,000 pounder. It's got a 7.2 horsepower motor, which is a, a large motor for a winch. A lot of them were running five and five and a half horsepower motors. This one's gone up, the new upgraded Dominator, Dominator X has gone up to a 7.2 horsepower winch, which is fantastic. Um, 218 I think it is to one uh, pull ratio so it's got good gearing in there it's waterproof um, good warranty 
you have 12 months warranty on the actual winch and on the actual motor, I think you've got a five year warranty, guys. So good peace of mind there. If something happens with it, back onto the four wheel drive super center and you can put your warranty claim in through there. Um, this one's running Dyneema rope, okay? And the Dyneema rope, you can either run steel cable or Dyneema. This one runs Dyneema and there's a lot of advantages of Dyneema rope over cable and there are some disadvantages also, I guess, but uh, Dyneema, 26 metres, 26 metres in length and it's a nine and a half millimetre thickness for the Dyneema rope. Um, so that's basically just some of the, the tabulated data, if you want to call it that, on the, on the um, Dominator winch. Just before I came on camera, I got on the internet quickly to see what the current price of these was. I got mine for just under 500 delivered. Oh, sorry, that was with a recovery kit, I think. But um, $389 delivered, guys, for a 12,000 pound winch with a fairly good warranty. You can't beat that. That's, that's bloody... Even if you only get five years out of it, or three years, you buy another one. Um, these worn winches were two, two and a half grand, some of them. Uh, you know, 389 delivered anywhere in Australia. Fantastic price, that, and that's the main reason I went with it. And because I see it on four-wheel drive action, getting put through its paces, seems to do the job for those guys, and they do some pretty heavy-duty recovery. So, but um, anyway, it's on there now. I've had about three months, and you'll see me a bit later in the clip actually pull it out hook it up and uh, make sure everything's working okay and I might even try and find somewhere and get the vehicle on a good angle and really really put it under some strain and see how it performs. Um, the whole time you'll see me harping on about safety all the, go all the time guys. Number one priority with, with any sort of recovery is safety and, and I will harp on that for the whole clip. Righto, why do we need a winch on our four wheel drive? This fly has given me the shits but I'll keep going. Righto, why do we need a winch on our four wheel drives? Lots of different reasons. Some pros for it, a lot of pros and a couple of cons, I guess, we might go through those. The number one thing is, this is my third four wheel drive I've, I've actually owned myself. The first one um, back in the uh, late 90s, I think I had an old Pajero, uh, old petrol Pajero, put it on its lid and rode it off in a sand dune over in West Aussie, so that was the end of the Pajero. And then, when I got out of the army, I uh, in 2002, I bought the old Nissan Terrano 2, the old T-Rex, which you've seen in some of my earlier clips. Had it for about 14 years, the T-Rex. Fantastic little vehicle, but it had an alloy bar on it, and I didn't have a winch. There's a couple of times where I wish I had a winch on it when I got bogged, but, you know, for 14 years, I got to Cape York and Fraser about three or four times in the in the T-Rex and that, and I didn't need a winch. Um, but there's a couple of times where I wish I did have one on there. But anyway, I've got the BT50 now. Got the ARB bull bar. It didn't have a winch in it when I got it. However, I've, I've put the Dominator in there. So the number one reason, obviously, is if you go four-wheel driving by yourself, just good peace of mind. If you want to go down a few remote tracks and you are by yourself, you've got to be able to self-recover. And having a winch on just gives you that peace of mind that if you do get bogged or you do get stuck going up a hill, that you've got the winch there as a backup if you need it. So self-recovery, probably the number one reason you'd have a, a winch on your vehicle. Um, certainly, you know, you're going up to Cape York by yourself and you're going down to some remote tracks, um, it's good insurance, you know, and cheap insurance for 400 bucks, real cheap insurance, you know. Um, the other one is if you go out four-wheel driving and there's three or four vehicles in your convoy, you go out with some mates, always fantastic to have at least one vehicle with a winch on, okay, so that you can recover other vehicles. Um, you know, you'll see a lot of them. Not everyone needs to have a winch, but if you've got one vehicle in the convoy with a winch, it just puts everyone's mind at ease. So if you do get stuck, someone's going to be coming to the rescue uh, with a 12,000 pound winch on their vehicle. The other one, the other good one too, is if you're out on the tracks, guys, and you are four wheel drive and you, you, you're going down some sort of forestry track and there's a tree falling over, you can use the winch to. Um, pull obstacles, uh, large rocks using your uh, tree trunk protector, pulling rocks off the road, keeping all the tracks clear for other vehicles because you see a lot of trees falling on the road and the first thing people do is just make a detour track, not good for the environment, making extra tracks where they don't need to be made. If you've got a winch on the front of your vehicle, you can maybe pull that tree off to the side 
and keep that track open, which is fantastic for everyone who's four-wheel driving. Uh, emergency service vehicles might, might need to get down that. Uh, rural fire brigade or whatever. Uh, great idea to keep all the, the forestry tracks open and um, clear the trees away. The other one is, uh, you know, you might come across any sort of situation. You never know where you could could need a winch. I know Phil's on a, some property down in New South Wales. He was using the winch on his patrol there a couple of months ago for pulling over dead trees, straightening fence poles up. Um, you know, just limited to your imagination. Come across an accident, uh, a vehicle might be about to go over a hill or whatever, you can hook your winch on and, and stop that vehicle from going any further down the hill. You might be able to pull it back up the hill to a certain extent. Uh, someone on the on your four-wheel drive uh, trip gets into a bit of a sticky situation and, and there's a, a chance that the vehicle could roll over, then you can always hook the winch up to the certain part of the vehicle and just make sure that that vehicle doesn't tip over uh, if it's in a bit of a precarious um, position, you know. And I've been watching the old uh, All for Adventure boys the last few weeks and I'll tell you what, I don't recommend this if you've got a winch, but they've been using their winch and tree trunk protectors to lower themselves down into caves and down the side of hills to look at blowholes and all that, but those guys are real professionals, so I don't recommend you do that with your winch, but that's certainly another side, uh, another thing that you can use your winch for if you're the more adventurous type, but I don't recommend that one. Um, so there's some of the pros of having a winch on your vehicle. What are some of the cons? Not too many really, except the weight. The weight of the Dominator here, it's a fairly light winch in comparison to some of the others, 26 kilograms, mainly light because it's got the Dyneema rope. You get those winches that have got the steel cable, you're getting up over 40 kilos, put an extra weight on your vehicle, adding to your GVM of your four wheel drive, adding to your fuel costs, you know, the more weight you put on your Forby, the more fuel you're going to chew, and depending on how good your suspension is, you may need to also upgrade your suspension if you want to put a winch on the front of your vehicle. So suspension's not cheap. I just paid $1,900 to, to get a, a lift on mine, on the BT50. I could probably have put this Dominator winch on with the standard suspension, 26 kilo. It wouldn't have made a great difference, but I wanted to get a suspension lift anyway. So that's something else to keep in mind, guys. If you, something you might put a $300 winch on, but you might be up for a couple of green on a suspension a suspension upgrade also so just keep that in the back of your mind but anyway I've got my first four-wheel drive now with a winch on uh, I haven't had to use it in anger yet I went and did the crab track there a couple of months ago but it was dry if it was wet definitely would have needed the dominator then but um, I do like to get out every month uh, test it make sure it works and as I said I will hook it up I'll show you how to hook it up and um, uh, it's got the cable for the um, the remote. It's also got a wireless remote, and I'll show you how that works on the Dominator. Fantastic, so you don't have to run the cable in through your window. It's actually got a like a wireless um, thing that it plugs into the side here, and you'll see me use that also. And um, as I said, I'll try and get out too by the end of this clip and find somewhere pretty gnarly if I can and, and uh, load the winch up and see how we go. So um, what I might do now is cut it there, guys, and I'll... Um, I'll come back and I'll give the Dominator a bit of a run. Um, before I do that, actually, I'd like to talk about the installation of the Dominator winch into the ARB bull bar. Just I nearly forgot then. Uh, as I said, my next door neighbour came over, Troy. He's a diesel mechanic, very good with his hands. I'm, I'm not a good mechanic at all, guys. I like to get people to do things for me, so I know they're done properly. I'm a bit rough when it comes to that type of stuff. But, you know, it took us a couple of hours and a few beers. Um, to do it, Troy's, as I said, Troy's very good. It bolted straight in, four high tensile bolts. Now the problem is, I thought we could put the uh, winch up through the bottom of the bull bar and mount it in that way. It just wouldn't quite go up through the bottom. And I thought, oh no, we're up for taking the bull bar off now just to install the bloody winch in there. But Troy came up with the idea. We took the, actually, I read it on a, a forum somewhere that someone said, try taking your grill out. So we plastic grill there that came out very easily just a few bolts up under the bonnet there took the plastic grill out of the BT50 and then it's a two man job you need really need two sets of hands to install the winch guys and I lowered the winch down to Troy he lay underneath the BT50 and he held the winch in place you basically rotate it 90 degrees four bolts here one two three four and I just fed the bolts in that way Troy put the nuts on 
and we bolted it in. Troy got out them. There's about three cables that he ran, joined it up to the battery. We've, I haven't got the dual battery under the bottom on this, so the winch is hooked up to my starting battery, which is a, they recommend you hook your winch up, guys, to the battery with the highest cranking amps, which is normally your starter battery. Um, dual batteries or auxiliary batteries are designed to run fridges and, and lighting and stuff. They, they haven't got the high cranking amps to run winches, so they always recommend you run your winch off your starter battery, which has got a real uh, high CCA cranking cranking amps or whatever they're called there. So, um, you know, a couple of hours to install. Two people, guys, if you're going to put your Dominator in, get your mate over, have a few beers. Installation cost, one carton of Great Northerns for Troy. And um, he did a good job. It's in, it's working, and I'm really happy with it. But uh, what I want to do now is I want to hook it up. Um, I'm out the back paddock at the moment. It's on a bit of a, uh, a slight lean. I'm going to hook the winch up to the mango tree. And I'm going to give it a run, it's monthly run. Unwind the winch cable, um, make sure everything's working properly. And that way when I go four wheel driving next, I know that my winch is going to work when I need it to work. All right, we'll cut it there and we'll hook the winch up and we'll see how we go, eh? Right, our guys, first safety tip for, the, for the, um, the clip is your safe working loads of all your recovery equipment. If you're going to do any sort of recovery, Make sure your recovery equipment has got a safe working load stamped or, or attached to the piece of equipment, no matter what it is. So, most of your recovery kits come with a bow shackle, not a D shackle, they're actually a bow shackle and um, used in different scenarios and that. But basically, if you ever get a bow shackle, make sure that the safe working load is actually stamped on your bow shackle. You get these cheap ones from hardwares and that and there's no stamp on You don't know what the, the rated um, or the safe working load of those are. So um, this one here, four and three quarter ton or 4.75 ton, not ton, ton, is the safe working load of this bow shackle. So anytime you use a bow shackle, guys, or any of your recovery gear, make sure your safe working load's actually stamped on it. Down to your tree, uh, tree trunk protector. Get me tongue twisted up the Sarbo. The old tree trunk protector. Now, this is probably the strongest strap you'll have in your recovery kit, and I'll explain a bit later on uh, in the in the clip why that is. But basically, this is your tree trunk protector, and it's got a 12,000 kilogram um, safe working load. Minimum. That's a minimum breaking strength, and that's basically twice twice the winch or um, of what the winch can put out and there's a reason for that so when you do a double line pull you might be halving the working load on the winch and winch cable but anything forward of that uh, tackle block is actually you're doubling the load on it and that's the reason your tree trunk protector has to be such a high um, a high breaking strength there and 12,000 kilograms you know that's minimum breaking strength so um, you know, really strong there. But make sure your, your tag's on and you know what your minimum braking strength is there or your safe working load. Down on my snap strap here. I'm not sure what brand this one is, just straps or whatever. I've also got a Hercules, a couple of Hercules ones. 8,000 kilogram braking strain on the, um, on the snap strap there. So once again, everything's, everything's tagged. If you've got any sort of equipment and there's no safe working load on it, get rid of it, get some new stuff. We've got the old uh, winch extension strap here, the purple one and the Hercules winch extension strap, 20 metres long. Minimum braking strength, 5,000 kilograms for your uh, winch extension strap. So as you can see, all my recovery gear is all marked with its um, safe working load or its minimum braking strength. So. That's one thing to do, guys. Check all your gear. Make sure it's all rated, especially your shackles. Make sure they're rated shackles. Don't get the cheap ones from the hardware that aren't stamped. Really important. One of those shackles lets go when the vehicle's under, under load. You can kill someone or put it through the windscreen. So always make sure your bow shackles are rated and you've got your um, minimum braking strength on all your straps. All right, first tip of the, of the clip. My second safety tip of the clip is, if you're wondering what that is, it's a winch dampener or a uh, winch blanket or a dampener. 
And basically what they are is when you row your winch ropes under load, you put these over the top and you'll see me do this when I actually do the, um, the, the actual winching later on in the clip. Basically that's designed to um, go over the rope and if the rope breaks, whether it be your Dyneema rope or your steel cable, it's designed to make, instead of it going straight out and taking somebody out, it's designed to make the winch rope fall to the ground. Now, a classic example of this, only yesterday, uh, Phil got his patrol hopelessly bogged down in New South Wales. He said he was that bogged he couldn't get the door open. That's how deep down he was. And uh, he's got a, a Mako Avenger winch on, uh, winch on the on the patrol with Dyneema rope, and he snapped the Dyneema rope three times trying to get the patrol out. The winch failed him three times. He couldn't get it out. They spent five hours doing the recovery. He sent me a bit of footage, and I tell you what, it was all hands on deck, really full on, and he said the, the winch went all right. It was just the winch rope, and he's, um, he's wondering if the Dyneema rope got a bit brittle or it was a bit old and uh, lost a bit of its, um, its braking strength. But he said he had the winch dampener on, or the blanket over the winch and he said when it did break on all three occasions he said the Dyneema rope just shot straight to the ground he said it didn't shoot around and fling around um, it made the, the rope go straight to the ground so he, he can vouch for these he said they work so make sure you always use a winch damp and a blanket uh, when you're doing your um, your recovery I'll probably harp on about the army a little bit in this clip too but that's where I first learnt to four wheel drive and, and how to use winches. We had PTO winches on the Unimogs and the Land Rovers in the Army, all ran steel cable. We didn't have Dyneema rope and that back in those days. My old transport supervisor, Barry English his name was, I hope he sees this clip one day. He's an old Vietnam vet, Barry, and um, he knew his stuff when it come to uh, four wheel driving and that. And he said he was winching on using an old international F1 truck one day and they had the big winch under strain and the steel cable let go and it flung back and it, the army didn't use dampener blankets and that for some reason back in those days and the cable cut the cabin of the old international truck clean in half that's that's how much power um, if that hits a body it's going to cut it clean in half and I've heard sto stories of that happening people being killed and cut in half by winch cable so the Barry actually was there the day that the old F1 truck got cut clean in half, the cabin, when a steel winch cable went. So, um, you know, if you haven't got these things, you can use wet sandbags um, or anything. Anything you can hang over to put weight on that winch rope, do it. Because it, uh, if your winch cable lets go, guys, you want it to drop to the ground. You don't want it shooting all over the place and putting people in danger. Anyway, second tip of the clip. All right, let's keep going on. Righto, next safety tip when dealing with winch cables, guys, is always wear a set of gloves. Now, I must admit, I don't normally wear gloves when I'm with the Dyneema rope. It's not as important when you're dealing with Dyneema rope wearing your gloves. But I'll tell you what, if you're running steel cable on your, on your winch, make sure you always wear a good set of uh, leather gloves. These came with the um, Hercules recovery kit. They're like a gardening gloves and they've got the extra protection there where the winch rope runs through your hand. Um, you get one of those steel cables and it's got one little strand of wire and you're in bare and she sticks in. I'll tell you what, I've done it, it hurts. So always wear a set of gloves. Um, once again, on our four-wheel drive course in the Army, if we went anywhere near a winch, we had to have gloves on or we were in deep shit. So, um, you know, gloves. I've got another... Uh, easier set of gloves here to um, to use they're like a, a little vinyl type set uh, you get a better feel with these for the Dyneema rope so I'll use them when I'm dealing with the Dyneema rope but if I'm dealing with steel cable uh, definitely have a decent set of gloves in your recovery kit right the next safety tip and this is probably one of the most important ones that I'll cover in this clip is when you're doing any sort of winch or snatch strap recovery if you're not required to be in the immediate vicinity get people out of there do not winch or use your snatch strap with people and bystanders hanging around where if something goes wrong they can get killed 
Now, the rule when I was in the army, guys, when we were winching with steel cable, is you only had two people really anywhere near the cable. The person in the vehicle and the person running the recovery on the outside. He's probably the one at, in most danger. Well, they're both, I guess, if something goes wrong, anyone near where the winch cable and the, the shackles are, all right, it can be dangerous. So one and a half times, if that winch rope's 20 metres, the closest person to that rope, besides the two people in the recovery, they should be at least 30 metres away, guys. One and a half times uh, the winch rope. How many times do you see on YouTube and, and some of the other DVDs you can get on four-wheel driving and you see people winching, uh, doing snatch strap recoveries and that, and there's half a dozen bystanders hanging around with their cameras all wanting to film it. Um, if you're running the recovery, guys, and you're in charge of it, you're on the outside, you're doing all the hookups and that, and you're calling the shots from the outside. If there's people in the danger zone, so to speak, it's your responsibility to get them out of there. Don't start your recovery until everyone's at a safe distance, especially kids. So if there's people hanging around on Fraser Island and, and you're running a winch recovery or a snatch strap recovery, and there's people hanging around with their cameras, just say, guys, get right out of the way before I start my recovery because if something goes wrong, a winch rope snaps and flicks around, a steel one, a shackle lets go and flings through the air, a shackle lets go during a, um, uh, you know, a, a snatch strap recovery, someone's in vicinity and then wears a, a bow shackle in the head doing about 300 kilometres an hour, they're going to die. So probably the number one safety tip Everyone's out of the way during a recovery. I'll, I'll keep harping on it throughout this clip. Get everyone out of the way. Uh, when you see me winching in a little bit later on, Roz will probably be filming, and I'll make sure she's way out of the way of that winch cable, at least one and a half times the length of the winch cable. And so if something does go wrong, it may not, but it may. And I want to make sure she's in a safe distance so she can't be hit by anything. All right, let's go on with the next one. Right, the next safety slant maintenance tip is the inspection of your winch cables uh, periodically. As I said, I like to get my winch out once a month, give it a run, make sure it's working, but also inspect that the cable, whether it's Dyneema or, or steel cable, is in good condition. Um, as I said, Phil's just done this recovery down in New South Wales. He snapped his Dyneema rope three times and he tends to think that maybe the rope was getting a bit old uh, Dyneema doesn't like being out in the sun on UV light all the time. Uh, so if you have got a winch on your vehicle, oh, it's not a good idea to park it out in the sun all day, every day. Try and keep it in the shed because the UV, I've been told, can weaken your Dyneema rope over a period of time. Maybe that's what's happened with Phil. So once you've got your winch cables out, and we used to have to do this every month in the Army, we used to have to do what they call non-tech inspections on our, on our vehicles non-technical inspections, and that included if there's a winch on there, we used to have to run the winch cable out. We had to inspect it for any frays, uh, if there was any cuts or nicks in it, and if there was, we had to report it through to our um, workshops and that, and if they deemed it unsafe, they would replace the cable on the on the winch. Same as your Dyneema rope, guys. If there's big frays in there, or if it's been over a sharp edge, like a rock or, or a, a rock ledge or whatever, and it's, it's half cut through, it's not safe to use it, so you might have to replace the Dyneema rope on your thing. So inspect, keep it clean. Every month in the army, we used to have to clean the, the cables. We used to get a big rag with some grease on it, and we just run the rag down the entire length of the, the rope and give it a light grease, the actual steel cable. Uh, with the Dyneema, they reckon you get, get a lot of mud and that through it. You should unravel it, put it in uh, hot, uh, warm soapy water, and then give it a good rinse out and make sure all the um, mud and grit and everything's out of your Dyneema rope because that can, over a period of time, um, make your rope fray and become weaker. So inspect your cables regularly, at least every month, guys. Wind them out, have a good look at them, and then wind it back in on the, on the drum and make sure that your cable's not going to let you down when you really need it. Right, how many times do you see on some of these four-wheel drive DVDs and, and YouTube and that, is people are winching another vehicle and to try and make things a bit quicker, they start um, reversing up 
while the winch is still coming in and it's just trying to actually use the winch rope as a snatch strap and that's not what they're designed for guys you shouldn't be using your winch as a tow rope or as a snatch strap because that's where something can go wrong you're gonna especially the dyneema rope that sudden jerking uh, motion can snap the rope so what you should do is just let the winch do the work to get the other vehicle out of the um, out of the mud or over the rocks or whatever the other vehicle obviously tries to turn their wheels nice and slow to assist the winch to take a bit of pressure off the winch but but don't start uh, dropping the clutch and and using your winch rope as a snatch strap because eventually it's going to let go and it'll probably let go at the worst possible time so there's another safety tip for you hey guys I touched on this just before and I'll reiterate it again when you're doing any sort of recovery whether it's a snatch strap recovery max tracks recovery any sort of recovery at all especially a winch recovery one boss and one boss only okay um, that was the big thing once again in the army you might have three four five people helping but there's always one person who calls the shots during a recovery and that person's also responsible for everyone's safety one boss during a recovery uh, you're in charge if you're running it and as I said get people out of the way but um, you know you can have helpers there sure but um, when you start doing all this, the signals, winching in, winching out, um, and all that type of stuff, just the one boss, too many people talking, things can go wrong. So one boss during a recovery. Right, the other one, guys, is um, if you're doing a single line pull with your winch and your winch is under too much strain, it's not working, things are starting to, you, you know, you'll know when, when that time comes then you go to a double line pull and you need to train yourself up on how to do that because what the double line pull will do is halve the strain on your winch, halve the strain on your winch rope and less chance of things going wrong on a double line pull. Um, things can still go wrong and I'll explain a little bit later on about your uh, tree trunk protector and your, your shackles and all that type of stuff but if you've got too much load on your winch you might have to go to a double line pull to um, just ease the pressure on your winch so uh, speaking of double line pulls if I had to do one in this at the moment I really couldn't and um, I really need to get some rated recovery points so all four wheel drive should come with them but they don't uh, I've got tie down points on the front of this I don't have rated recovery points so if I want to do a double line pull go through a um, the, the tackle block and come back I've got nowhere to attach the D shackle, oh, sorry, not the D shackle, the bow shackle to my vehicle. So I really need to get into Iron Man. I'm going to go in there tomorrow and see if um, I know Iron Man sell rated recovery points. And I've got to get two rated recovery points on the front of the BT50. Because at the moment I technically can't do a double line pull. And I want to be able to do one just in case. So just remember that. Too much strain on your winch, you might have to do a double line pull. Right, guys, we're going to get on with the uh, actual operation of the winch now into the good stuff. It's the following morning. We ran out of um, light last night when I was doing a lot of the safety stuff and that. But a uh, beautiful morning. The rain's gone away. Clear blue skies. Hopefully you can see the Queensland's two highest mountains over there as a backdrop. But um, right, so let's get into the Dominator winch, the Dominator X. It's the upgraded uh, Dominator from the Super Center, as I said. 12,000 pounds. On the top here you can see the control box. Okay, and just some of the items that it comes with is obviously with all winches you need a controller so you can control your winch from inside the cabin. There's your controller. You've got a cable that's about, I don't know, how long, maybe two or three metres long. So now the cable, it plugs into the side of the control box nice and easy there. It only goes one way, you've got to hold your tongue the right way I've found with this. It's um, Sometimes you can get it to go straight in and other times, it's uh, there we go, and it just pushes on like that. Now that's ready to go and on here, I don't know if it'll come up because of the sunlight. Once that's plugged in, the winch is now live guys, even if the engine of the, the vehicle switched off. Alright, and it comes up and says wired. It's got wired and wireless at the moment because I've got the wire in it comes up as as wired now like when you're winching and you're doing a winch recovery you should always have your engine on mainly because 
the winch draws a lot of current out of your um, out of your starter battery. So when you see me start winching, um, when we hook up, I'll obviously have the engine running. And in a real recovery situation, guys, you've got to drive your wheels nice and slow to try and help the winch along and take the strain off the winch anyway. So you always have your engine running. And they say you should winch in a heavy winching uh, situation. Winch for 30 seconds, take it off, let the engine run, put some more into the battery, let the winch cool down a little bit, and then winch for another 30 seconds. So they always recommend, where possible, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. So that's that's the normal setup with, with most winches. Now the good thing about the Dominator winch is there's other winches the same. You can take this cable off now, very simple. We'll just put that down there. And you get this device here, guys. It's like a little wireless device that's obviously linked into the, the set there. So what that does is it just takes the place of the cable and we plug that into the side of the control box. Once again, the pins only line up one set. There you go. You just keep twisting it around until you, you feel it go on. And then nothing's on there. But if I hit that blue button now, the wireless light comes on. So that means now that I can control that winch wirelessly. So I haven't got a cable, so it's very handy. It's just a small battery that goes in the side there. So fantastic, the Dominator has got wireless. So simple in, uh, instructions there, in and out. Even I can follow that one. So if we get the winch now and I go out, and you'll see the winch will come out. As you can see, the engine's not on. So the winch is live. As soon as you plug something in there, the winch becomes live and you can operate the winch. All right, what we'll do now is, oh, just before I do that, the clutch, the clutch lever to engage and disengage so you can free spool the winch out is inside here and you see there's a, a, um, a hole for your hand. So you just got to get used to, uh, it's a quarter turn to disengage the clutch so you can free spool your, your rope out. And then just remember, don't try and winch when it's in free spill. You've got to come back, turn it, turn it to lock, and that way you can winch back in. I did that the first time. I thought, why isn't the winch working? I forgot to turn the, the clutch back off. So, um, very simple. Just get used to the operation of that, guys, once you install the winch. All right, what we'll do now is go, quickly go on with some hand signals. All right, we'll... right, when you're winching, you, you're normally going to have two people. Sometimes you might be in, the, in there by yourself if you're out four-wheel driving by yourself, but a lot of other times, too, you'll have two people involved in the recovery. You'll have someone inside the vehicle and you'll have the person who's operating the recovery on the outside and there's times where you may have to do hand signals. So very important that you know your driver knows exactly, if you're starting to do hand signals, he knows exactly what those hand signals mean. And in the winching world, there's some real basic ones, guys. Um, this one here is winch in. So if I'm looking at the driver, winch in, the driver needs to know that that means winch in, okay? The another one there, winch out, down like that. Now the disadvantage of that is if you're, if you may be close to the vehicle, the driver may not be able to see you doing that for winch out. Winch in, they'll see, winch out. So there's another one, and this is the one I prefer to use, is with an open palm, winch in. That means winch in. So you're pointing towards the vehicle, you want the rope to come into the vehicle, so you're winching in there. And if you want the, you want them to winch out uh, a metre or so, winch out, winch out, winch in, and obviously the universal hand signal for stop. And that one there means bump it. And I'll, I'll explain what bump it means now. I'll just bring it out a little bit. So if I say bump it, the driver inside will just go, that's a bump. When you're getting the winch right towards the end there, that's a bump, so they just quickly flick the in button, and that's a bump. So you don't want to uh, you don't want to jam that that hook and do any damage there. So that means bump it, winch in, winch out. Now the easiest way, guys, and I don't have them at the moment. I used to have a set is UHF handheld uh, radios. Got your UHF on inside there, and your person doing the recovery outside will have a uh, handheld UHF. I go fill mine, I've got to get a new set, so that's probably the preferred option. But if you don't have UHF radios, then make sure that you and the driver 
know the hand signals and, and make sure you know them before you start the winching operation. Alright, we'll stop it there and we'll show them how to hook the winch up. Right, guys, as I said at the start of the clip, once a month I like to get the BT50 out in the back paddock. It's on a bit of a slant, so you probably won't pick it up in the in the video, but it is on a bit of an angle, so um, we get a chance to uh, basically unspool the winch once a month, hook everything up, give the winch a run and make sure that the winch is working properly, and also make sure that the ropes spool back onto the, um, the spool properly too. And after you do a heavy recovery, it's probably worthwhile doing this when you get home, guys. Unspool it again and spool it back on just to make sure that the rope's nice and even on the, on the drum and that it hasn't crossed up and that and sometimes that can happen during a heavy recovery. You haven't got time to worry about that at the time. You just need to get the vehicle out of the situation you're in. But what I'll do now is we'll run through how to, how to hook it up basically or how I hook it up and um, probably another couple of little safety tips also. Eh? So first thing you want to do, situate your vehicle and find an appropriate tree. I've got a nice little uh, mango tree straight up ahead there. And what I like to do, obviously, gloves on first, guys, and get your tree trunk protector and just grab your winch blanket so you don't forget about it. Sometimes you can hook your winch up and you can forget about this. You've seen how important they can be. And what we'll do now is we'll go up to the mango tree and we'll hook the... Uh, I'll just put that in the middle for now. around the mango tree, make sure there's no twists, make sure it's nice and even. Now, always use a tree trunk protector guys, a couple of reasons for that. They've got a 12,000 kilogram rating, so they're really rated high, and the reason for that is if you do a double line pull, you're putting extra pressure on, on this part of the, um, of the strap here. So the tree trunk protector needs to be nice and strong, which it is, okay? Get it nice and low. Make sure the tree you pick isn't dead so that when you start winching, it's not gonna pull out of the ground or it's not gonna snap in half. Okay, try and get nice and low if you can. Sometimes you might have to go a little bit higher to keep your Dyneema rope up off the ground so you're not going across sharp rocks or something like that. That's fine as long as the tree can handle it. But where, where you can, try and keep your um, tree trunk protector down nice and low. Get it nice and even, make sure there's no twists in it. Okay, and we lay it down like that. Next thing we need to do then is actually go and get the winch and get the winch up to here. So we'll stop the camera there, I'll go back and we'll do that. Okay, you know, I'm back at the winch now guys. Now the next thing I need to do to, to get the winch rope out is I need to put it on the free spool and, and uh, disengage the clutch basically. So Put my hand in there, and it's just a, a quarter turn, you'll hear it click in, and now I can free spool the uh, the winch rope, as obviously with gloves on, we'll grab the hook, and there's, you've got to put a little bit of effort into this guy, especially if you're going uphill or whatever, it's not totally easy, but so you've got to, you've got to put your body weight into it, try not to rush it, just let your body weight do the trick, lean into it, you might feel a grab a little bit, you just got to put a bit extra there, righto, we'll stop here, and I'm just going to go through a couple of, um, couple of safety tips guys, and a couple of don't do's. I'll just pull a little bit more out there. It said 26 metres of this Dyneema rope. This is a big no-no, what I'm about to do, guys. Wrapping you, wrapping it around like that. And winching like that. A couple of reasons. One, you're going to ring bark the tree, or you could ring bark the tree and do damage to the tree. The other reason, you can do damage to your winch rope, okay? It's not designed to do that, so that's a big no-no, don't do it. You put extra pressure on it, and there's an extra chance of it snapping. Alrighty? So don't ever do that. I'll show you something else. 
that you see a lot of people do also with their bow shackles and I recommend that you don't do this for a single line pull. If you just want to come in nice and close, Ross. You see people do this. Put the pin through. And then clip onto that. Now, that works. There's no, that'll actually work guys and there's sometimes where you've got to use a bow shackle you can't get away from it but in this situation here that's just an extra piece of metal that doesn't need to be there in my opinion and if you watch um, Ronnie Dale who I've mentioned already Ronnie's another big one who doesn't do this I've seen him do this on a lot of four-wheel drive uh, DVDs and I'm thinking it's just a, uh, an extra piece of metal that doesn't need to be there. So what I like to do, just for a single line pull, get rid of this bow shackle. If you're using a winch extension strap and that, then you've got to use a bow shackle. There's times where you've just got to use them. It's just a fact of life. But where you can reduce down and minimise the risk, then hey, why not do it? I like to just get both, the, both of them like that, make sure they're clipped in. And there we go lot safer so it's just one extra piece of metal that you don't need in there so what I'll probably do now we'll go back we'll hook up the um, the Wi-Fi winch controller again we'll wheel it in a bit and we'll put the winch blanket over and we'll actually um, put the winch to the test and spool the rope back onto the drum all right Another safety tip here guys, back to the army days, if we were ever seen stepping across a winch rope, we're on our faces uh, doing 20 push ups every time, never step across a winch rope, now with Dyneema rope, you'll see other people say if you're going to step across it, step on the rope and then across, a good habit to get into is just don't even go across a winch rope at all if you can help it. When it's under strain, do not ever go across. That is the big time where you do not cross a winch rope. When the winch rope's under strain, never ever step over it. Don't even go under it. All right, stay to one side, work out what way you're going to work from, and stay on there. When it's not under, when it's not under like that, it's pretty harmless. Bit of common sense now step on it and then over it but try and get into the habit of not even crossing that winch rope at all guys so there's another little safety tip what we'll do now I'll go back we'll hook it up I'll just take up the strain we'll put the winch blanket on and we'll put the um, the winch to the test all right remember I said make sure you engage the clutch again guys well guess what old dickhead here did forgot to do it old Russell Coy did his best so I've, en I've engaged it now because it wouldn't work Anyway, we've got to take up the slack. I've got the camera in one hand. I'll just yell the, uh, Roz can hear me. She's got the winch controller in there. And as I said now, I'm running the show. Roz has got the winch controller. Everyone else is out of the way. All right, bystanders out of the way. Not that we've got bystanders here, but Fraser Island and that guys, you're in charge of the recovery. Get everyone out of the way. So we'll just take the slack up at the moment. Winch, winch in. Stop! Righto, here we go. Now we've taken up the strain. You see my winch blanket? Not quite halfway, it's a little bit closer to the... Um, they say you should have your uh, your winch blanket probably, if you had two, the other one's in the shed, you're probably good to have another one up near the, the metal pieces. But I'll just put it in halfway for now. As I said, this is guys now, as I said, I'm not doing a heavy recovery. This is just out in the backyard. And basically this is the time to inspect your winch rope. Have a look if there's any frays, cuts or nicks. Now, if you're doing a real recovery out bush and that Dyneema rope is across the ground like that and it's going across rocks or sharp edges, a couple of things you can do. Lift your tree trunk protector up a bit to get it off the ground, if possible, or run a tarp over the sharp edges, sharp rocks 
so that your Dyneema rope's running over a tarp or whatever, or a blanket or something like that, just to keep it off any sharp edges. Pretty lucky you got nice grass. And as I said, this is just a quick demo to show you how to use the winch anyway, guys. So I'll give Roz the hand signals now, and we'll go from there. Engine's on, vehicle's in neutral. The reason for that, just for this, is I want the winch to um, do a little bit of work. We are slightly uphill, but in a normal recovery situation, guys, you'd be in first gear, low range, and you'd be slowly driving, just slowly trying to turn those wheels to take the pressure off the winch. But just for this demonstration, Roz has got it in neutral because I want the winch to do a little bit of work and I want it to pull the full weight of the BT50 up a, I don't know, a, a 10 or a 15 degree incline without um, giving any assistance to the winch. All right, so I'll just get out of the way. I won't stand right near the, the rope. Now, Ronnie Dale, what he'll do is he actually stands here with his gloves and he tries to feed the rope onto the drum, okay, to make sure the rope's going on the drum nice and even. If I see it going a bit wonky or going off, I'll come in and do that, but I'll stay away from the rope for now. Right, let's go. Winching in. You see there? We'll winch for about 30 seconds and we'll give it a 30 second break. Rope's under pressure now, tree trunk protector's under pressure and so is that um, the hook up there. Alright, so we stop him there, Rafa's in giving Ros a hand. Now, you can see now guys, if you could feel the pressure on that rope, it is under pressure, okay? There's a lot of pressure on that, even just on a 10 degree. Imagine how much pressure is going to be on that Dyneema rope or cable if you've got it, if you're coming up a 45 degree uh, angle. This is where you never step over a rope. Don't ever do it. If you see someone else going to do it, tell them to get away. Righto. 30 second break. As I said, you're giving your battery a bit of a rest also by doing this. Let's winch in again. I'm Keeping an eye on the, the rope going in. Make sure it's going in good. Seems to be going on nice and even. It's working its way across to the left there now. And then it should start coming back. Stop him there. Here we go, winch it in again. You might have to adjust your, your blanket as it creeps up, move it back slightly. Nice and slow. Sometimes you might only need to pull your vehicle a meter, guys, just so until your wheels grip. That's all it might take sometimes. But really giving this winch a good workout now, letting it do all the work. And you can see now the winch is doing what it's supposed to do. It's, it was over on the left, it's slowly coming back and working its way across. So it's spooling onto the drum nice and nice and even. That's what we want. We'll give him another rest there. We'll move our winch blanket down again. So there's a bit of weight on there. As I said, my son snapped his three times the other night doing a full on recovery in his patrol and he said that winch blanket did its job. Um, I've never seen it happen, but I'm taking his word for it. It worked a treat, he reckons. Right, let's go up here, we'll have a quick look. Yep, tree trunk protectors, good, no twists. It's on the hook properly. Everything looks good there. And let's go again. It's a slow process, guys, but it'll eventually get you out of your, your pr predicament. Winch blanket's coming up close now. I'll stop right shortly. Move the winch blanket down again. 
more than likely we'd be out of the out of the bog or over the obstacle by now but we'll just keep it going a little bit more winch in or winch winch in if you're going to use voice commands should say it twice guys winch winch in winch winch out probably another good habit to get into what we'll do now stop it there okay now what i'm going to do now is before i can disconnect there's still a lot of pressure on that that's tight as okay so i'm going to get ros to take up the slack and she'll engage first gear try forward about a meter so i can um so i can unhook righto engage first gear and i'm going to get you to drive forward a couple of meters ros to take the slack off Stop there. All right. What we'll do now is I'll get Roz to come out. I'll disconnect and we'll uh, I'll show you how to get it all the way onto the drum. Right, guys. I just needed two hands there just to disconnect the um, the winch from the tree trunk protector and just to take the blanket off. So what I'll do now is I'll grab the hook, okay, and I'm going to lean right back. I'm going to lean right back now. In the last couple of meters, I'm gonna get Roz to bump it and I'm gonna feed it onto the drum using my body weight, about 95 kilo. Leaning back just to keep the pressure on. Righto, winch in. Leaning back now. Bump it. Bump it. So Roz is bumping it at the moment. She, she can see me nodding my head. Bump, 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 stop. There you go, guys. Winch is back on. So what we've done now is I've unraveled the reel. I've hooked it up. I've pulled the weight of the BT50 up on a, I don't know if it'll come up, but it's on about a 10 degree angle, 15 degree angle, I suppose. The, the land's sloping upwards, so I've put some good um, weight on the winch rope. Winch rope spooled on fairly evenly from what I can see. It's not all birds nested and that. It's It's gone across like that. I hope that came up in the film, and that's how you want it now. You don't want it crossing over each other. So now, I know my winch works. I know my controller works. I know the wireless thing is working. Everything's working the way it should. All my gear looks in good condition, no frays. All my recovery gear seems to be um, where it's supposed to be. So once a month, guys, get out and do that. Um, if you've got a winch on, keep it working. If you don't get stuck and you don't need to use it in a recovery situation, get it out once a month and put it to the test. And that way, when you do go four-wheel driving by yourself or with your mates, you know it's gonna work. So what I'll do from here hopefully find somewhere this afternoon with um, a decent sort of hill on it and we'll really put that winch under some strain and we'll see how she goes putting it to the test, eh? Right guys, I found a nice little hill here at Warwick Creek, a little grassy hill which is pretty, um, pretty wet without a fair bit of rain so that's the other good thing too, if you're starting to tear up the environment your winch can, can help pull up without um, you know, tearing the place up in that sand dunes or grassy hills or whatever. So that's another another advantage. So, I'll, uh, as I said, I'm just in two-wheel drive just to, um, I could probably drive up this quite easily in four-wheel drive. I'll keep it in two-wheel drive because I want the winch to do all the work. So I'll just show you the back wheels that I'm not going anywhere. All right, so simulate there, I'm stuck. I can't get up the hill. This is the time to reach for the winch. All right, we'll stop it there and we'll hook it up, eh? Righto, so I've decided that I'm going to go for the winch. Okay, gloves on, winch blanket and tree trunk protector. I've pretty well only got one tree that I can use at the moment. It's up there. I've gone up and tested it, make sure it's nice and solid. That'll hold me. Now, not the ideal scenario here, guys. I'm winching on a bit of an angle. It's not the ideal scenario, but... It's not on such an angle that I'm going to roll the vehicle or anything, so um, I'm confident that it's not going to tip or whatever. Just something to be aware of too if you're winching off camber. So what we'll do now, I'll throw the winch blanket and we'll go and put the tree trunk protector on.
leg you don't. Free trunk protectors on. What I've got to do now, come in a bit closer, Ross. Put it on free spool. And let's take it up and hook it up. Unlike this morning, remember to put the winch back in gear, or the, engage it back again. Alright. That's it, okay. Just give it a winch rope a tug and it shouldn't be able to come out now. Alright, so in this scenario, as I said this morning, when you're winching, you normally drive the wheels to try and assist the winch. But I want the winch to do all the work here. I want to give it a good test out. If I'm still spinning or whatever, I might have to engage four wheel drive and assist the winch. But I'm just gonna let the winch do all the work. It's not that steep of an angle. It's a bit off camber, but it is a, it is a good, little, um, good little hill. And as I said, I might only need to winch five meters or so and drive the rest of the way. But I'm gonna let the winch do most of the work and we'll see how we go. So, all right, let's cut it there and we'll start winching, eh? All right, guys, in this scenario, I'm gonna just pretend I'm out four-wheel driving by myself. I've gotta be inside the vehicle, use the controller by myself. Now, I've plugged the Wi-Fi device in. I'm gonna go um, use the Wi-Fi or the wireless one. Uh, do it myself. I've got Roz out of the way. Um, if the hook lets go, it's going to fly forward that way. So I've got Roz up here uh, for safety reasons. Got her right out of the way, so she's not over there in, in any danger. So righto, let's start her up and we'll see how we go. Eh? So hopefully you got a second person. Normally they can move the winch blanket for you, but. Um So there's a bit of strain on it, but it's pulling me. I'm not helping the winch at all, and it's just pulling me up.
happy with that. Alright, what we'll do there is I'll just drive him out, we'll come around and we'll finish up, I'll have a quick chat and we'll finish up the clip, mate. Eh? Alright, beauty. Righto guys, time to wind the clip up now. As I said, we're down at Warwicker Creek and we just did a little winching thing. Don't forget to pull the Wi-Fi thing off your winch, I did that this morning too. It's easy to forget, not a big deal if you do, but um, turn, your, turn your controller off and, and pull that out and put the... Uh, the dust and mud cap over at the end but anyway guys I, I hope I hope I've taught you something during this clip or, or one of the safety things that you didn't know about or whatever and if you're thinking of getting a dominator winch well it's working all right had it for a few months now I haven't had to use it in anger as, as I've said but um you know I like to get it out every month test it out make sure it works you get stuck in a situation and you're really going to rely on that winch you want to know it's going to work first time every time so pull your winches out every month check them for safety check your ropes make sure they work give them a run um, but as I said just remember the safety if I've done something wrong or you think I've done something wrong safety wise during the clip drop a comment down and let me know guys because I'm not an expert in this and as I said um, don't don't think that I'm the be all end all of winching I'm I'm very basic at it but I do know most of your safety stuff and and what have you and I know enough to get myself out of trouble if I'm out four wheel driving but um, as I said I'll throw Ronnie Dale's li link at the end so you can check his out he goes a lot more into depth than, than me but um, anyway there's the Dominator winch a lot, a lot of you has been asking me for it how to use it want to want to see me reel it out and put it to use but uh, you saw me this morning do it uh, in the paddock and now here on that little hill so anyway I'll give the Dominator a thumbs up happy with it so far I just hope it keeps working and never lets me down so anyway guys if you've got mates out there that are into winching or they're going to put a winch on their vehicle and you know that they're not really um, up on the safety and that of winching show them this clip and the whole idea of me doing this is to try and teach people and hopefully someone learns and um, it might save someone's life one day by not um, not breaching one of those safety things I talked about. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. It's a long clip, I know. I'll wrap it up. Time for a great northern. I worked a sweat up, actually, doing that. And um, we'll catch you next time, eh? Thanks for watching. See you later.
remember how I said engage the engage the thing? Oh, I fucking forgot to do it, didn't I? <laughs> do you want me to turn the camera off? <laughs>